Welcome to the Divorce Survival Guide podcast, where we have open and honest conversations about co-parenting, separation, divorce, and the hardest question of all, should you stay or should you go? I'm Kate Anthony, your Divorce Survival Guide, and I'm here to help you navigate some of the roughest waters you've ever swum in and answer some of your toughest questions. I've been to hell and back, and now it's my mission in life to help you get to the other side of this process with your sanity and your heart intact. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. We have a Q&A episode today. Yay! I also, before I get into the questions and answering some of these questions, I want to let you know that in my Facebook group, Should I Stay or Should I Go, which is for women only, sorry guys, I am doing a three-day challenge slash workshop. It's about Should I Stay or Should I Go? And it's going to be for three consecutive days, and it's going to be on April 11th, 12th, and 13th at 11 a.m. Pacific time in the Facebook group. Uh, The topic is, should I stay or should I go? And uh, the first day is going to be about, you know, but he's fine. (laughs) But he's fine. He's great. He's a good guy. The second day is going to be sort of uncovering some, like, is this abuse? Is this abuse? Is this abuse? And the third day is going to be going through a little bit of like, is the grass greener on the other side? Because I think a lot of people want to know like, okay, okay, but is it going to be better than this? (laughs) Am I going to be trading in one set of problems for bigger problems on the other side? So those are the three days. It's going to be in the Facebook group. As I said, April 11th, 12th, and 13th at 11 a.m. Pacific live in the Facebook group. So Put that on your calendar. Make sure you're in there. And when I go live, you should get a little notification. Um, If you're not in the Facebook group yet, in the show notes is a link to join. And my, uh, and if you just want to search, should I stay or should I go um, on Facebook, it will come up and it should have my picture. So you might recognize me. Okay. So back to our episode. So Q&A. I have four questions here. I'm going to keep them anonymous because I think that that's what y'all would prefer. So I have one that says, my children are late teens, 17 and 19. Their father, my soon-to-be ex, is a covert narcissist. I would love to know suggestions and resources for children of narcissists. Mm, Such a good one. So there is a book called Raising Resilient Children with a Borderline or Narcissistic Parent. It's by Margalis Fjellstad and Jean McBride. And I have to be honest and tell you, I have not read this book. Um, I have it (laughs) in my possession, um, but I haven't actually read it yet. But um, it was recommended to me. I don't, I think by a client, maybe. I think that that might be your best bet and your best resource for for a book anyway. I think the best thing that you can do, first of all, is suggest to them. Now, they're, one of them is an adult. The other one's about to be an adult. And so I would hope that they have therapists. And if they don't, I would absolutely recommend it. You can't, you know, force them to go to therapy because, um, again, they're One's an adult and one is about to be. But I would highly recommend that you recommend it strongly. Um, And if you can offer to pay for it, I think that would also be helpful for them. You know, the other thing to do is to really um, acknowledge and honor their feelings about it, right? So when they have, when they come to you, hopefully they come to you with some issues and they say, you know, oh, dad did this thing and it's really, you know, hard or whatever. I think that being able to say to them, I'm so sorry that happened. That must have been really hard. That must have been really painful. Um, and there's a very, very difficult, tricky line between honoring and mirroring their feelings and throwing their dad under the bus. And I'm sure you are familiar (laughs) 
with that tricky balance if you have been co-parenting with a covert narcissist for um, any length of time. I think so So many of us err on the side of not wanting to throw the, the co-parent under the bus, right? Um, and, you know, it's not throwing them under the bus to just acknowledge the truth because we can't gaslight our kids. So when they are experiencing something that feels really difficult or messed up or, you know, confusing, the worst thing we can do is be like, what are you talking about? It's He's fine. Oh, he's just your dad. You know, no, like, yeah, I understand. It's really hard. That That's a hard thing about your dad. I struggled with that as well. Here's what I found useful. Here's how I was able to communicate with your dad about these things. Here's what I suggest, you know, and at the end of the day, They are, again, an adult and about to be adult, and they are going to be able to choose their relationship with their father. If you see any concerning, like super codependent traits showing up, because that's, you know, the other thing that can happen with children of covert narcissists is that they're constantly trying to please their their parents so they don't get in trouble. You know, as you know, having been married to him, right, there's a constant moving target of, you know, satisfaction. And you probably spent a good portion of your marriage trying to hit that target and then hit the target and then it would move. And then you'd be like, okay, well, I'll do this. And then everything will be fine. And I'll do this. And if you notice that behavior in your children, you may uh, want to gently point it out to them and have, have an open discussion with them about it. Again, without throwing their dad under the bus. Tricky, tricky, tricky balance, and but also a really important one to strike. Okay, so next question. Hmm. How do you get out of a marriage or how do you co-parent when your partner struggles with mental illness, depression, and has had suicidal ideations? I have this uh, happen a lot with my clients and followers. We talk about this a lot. Um, first of all, if you're in my Facebook group and you do a search in the group, you will find a lot of answers to this. But here's what I will say. First of all, I really hope that your partner who is struggling with depression and suicidal ideation has a good therapist. And if they have a very good therapist, you may want to call the therapist and say, hey, I need to have this conversation. Um, First of all, is it, do you think it's safe to do so? Secondly, can I, can I come in and have the conversation in therapy? Or if you have a couples therapist, do it there, but you want to make sure that, I mean, you know, is this depression treated, right? Are they on medication? Are they in therapy? Are they past the suicidal ideation period? If the answer to all of those questions is yes, they are they are, it, everything is managed, then you know, you have this conversation as gently as possible. I have many resources on how to tell your spouse that you are that you want a divorce. I have a um, it's the first video in my program, the Divorce Survival Program. I have a podcast episode on it, and I have a uh, a blog post on it. So, um, you know, there we go. There's ton. I have tons of resources about how to tell someone and the way that that works, like the way that you tell someone, um, as I recommend it is with a lot of compassion and empathy and kindness. Yes. If there is depression and suicidal ideation, and this is, you're scared that it's going to trigger, them into a deeper, darker place, you, you definitely want, it doesn't matter how you have, how gently you have the conversation, the, you know, the answer is still the same and it is still your right. You still get to end a marriage that isn't working for you, but you need to do it carefully, obviously. And you want to do it hopefully, if possible, in conjunction with his therapeutic team. If they don't have a support system, If they don't have a therapist, if they are not on medication, and if they, you know, their suicidal ideations are current and really if they're, if they're untreated, first of all, it's not your fucking job 
to stay in a marriage with someone who is not taking care of themselves. It is not your fucking job to do the work of taking care of their mental health for them. Even if they are doing the work for themselves, it's still not your fucking job to do the work for them or, right? It's their work. That is their work. It is your fucking job to be kind and compassionate and and careful about this, but you are not trapped. And I think one of the biggest issues people have when they're dealing with this is that they feel like they're trapped. They feel like I can't go. I can't do it because he's going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to go off the deep end. That may end up being true and it will not be your fault. You cannot control it. You didn't cause their mental illness. You can't control it. So you want to be, as I said, careful and kind and compassionate and helpful but you still get to have the conversation. If you want to end your marriage, you still get to do it. And you may end up having to call family and friends and say like, hey, I'm gonna have this conversation. I'm very worried about his mental health. I have to have this conversation. I obviously can't be the person to you know, to help him through it. So I want you to know I'm gonna have this conversation with him on Saturday. So I think he's gonna need people around him immediately. And he may be really fucking pissed off at you for telling, or they, sorry, may be really fucking pissed off at you for for telling other people that this is happening um, and or about their mental illness. And it is the right thing to do. Now, if they then end up threatening suicide in the process um, or attempting suicide in the process, but even if it's only just a threat, you immediately call the suicide prevention hotline and you make sure that they have all the supports necessary to get through this on their own. And if the, th- if the threat of suicide is, a, is just a tactic, if they're just kind of using it as a manipulation tool, they will probably never do it again because you have essentially called their bluff. Um, and if it is a real threat, they will get the help that they need. Do not hesitate to call. Do not hesitate to call the police if necessary. If they are actually uh, following through, do not hesitate. This is a very tricky one and you are not trapped. Okay, next question. What can we do when our soon-to-be ex-spouse tries to take full custody and severely restricts our parenting time? How do we address unfounded accusations, false narratives, and manipulative behavior designed to make us look like unfit parents and make them look like victims just trying to protect the kids? As an HSP, it's a highly sensitive person, going through this kind of high-conflict divorce feels traumatic and I struggle with it daily. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, I think the, listen, even if you're not an HSP, And even if your divorce is not high conflict, divorce is traumatic. Um, Add in being a highly sensitive person, which if anyone wants to know more about that, I did a podcast episode on it just last week. But if you're an HSP and you're going through a high conflict divorce, it will feel even more traumatic. Absolutely. So the best thing you can do for on that end is a lot of self-care, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of self-care. And self-care does not mean taking a bubble bath or, you know, getting a mani-pedi or taking a bath. Self-care means what is your support system? What does your support system look like? Do you have a therapist? Are you working with a coach who specializes in high-conflict divorce? Are you surrounding yourself with systems and support structures to keep you going every day. So that is number one. How do you address unfounded accusations, false narratives, and manipulative behavior? So, I mean, the best thing you can do is document everything. So if you have documentation that this is unfounded or a false narrative, if you can prove it, keep all the documentation possible. If you are in a one-party consent state, So just Google it. Um, Is my state 
a two-party consent state or a one-party consent state. If it's a one-party consent state, you don't need to have their permission to record conversations. So if there are conversations that are that might prove that what they're saying is a lie, then record them. Record the conversations. Document, save, save, you know, as much as possible, have your communication in writing. So whether that's through a, a co-parenting app, which you should be doing if it's super high conflict, or, you know, by email or text, at least keep screenshots of all of these things. Save all of the of the um, emails, start a folder in um, your Google Drive. The best thing you can do is have proof that these are unfounded accusations. You know, you can do nothing about manipulative behavior. They are simply um, going to be manipulative, right? And so, yes, yeah, so documentation and talk to your attorney. If you're in a high conflict divorce like this, I hope you have a, a really good attorney who is. Uh, well-versed in this kind of thing. That's, you know, really it's having a professional team, having a strong professional team in front of you, um, surrounding you in this. Tina Swithin also has a lot of um, information about this because she went through it. Um, Her uh, website is One Mom's Battle. So I highly recommend you sort of consume all of her information about that as well. And now, a quick word from our sponsor today, the Should I Stay or Should I Go program. That's right. It's my program. I'm sponsoring myself today. Look, if you're terrified, brokenhearted, and desperate for answers, if you've consulted oracles and spirit guides and journaled to death about whether or not to leave your marriage, if you've taken all of the classes, read all of the books, and listened to all of the podcasts, but you're still not sure what to do— then Should I Stay or Should I Go is for you. Should I Stay or Should I Go is a self-paced online coaching program that will give you all of the tools you need to make the best decision about your marriage for yourself and your kids. There is no other coaching program out there designed to answer this specific question backed by an in-depth study of marriage and human psychology. There is no other coaching program out there created by someone who has walked this path or has such an incredible amount of experience helping women successfully travel the road to freedom. Freedom from doubt and confusion, freedom from constant worry and the swirl of indecision, and freedom from a history of unhealthy and toxic relationships. If you're ready to break free and find the answers you've been looking for, along with confidence and clarity, then join me and hundreds of other women in the Should I Stay or Should I Go program. Truly, the time is now, because you, my love, deserve to be happy. Just go to kateanthony.com slash should I stay and use the code DSGPOD for $50 off. That's DSG pod, as in Divorce Survival Guide Podcast. So it's kateanthony.com slash should I stay and use the code DSG pod and you'll get $50 off for being a loyal and faithful listener. Thank you so much. And now back to our episode. Okay, last question. I enjoyed your podcast with Leanne Oten. In it, you mentioned doing a podcast on how all of the abuse affects the kids. I have two boys that are now over 18. My divorce was final in 2019, so they were 18 and 16 by the time I ended the 28-year marriage. We moved 3,200 miles away from the NARC, and I am now fully no contact with him. The move has helped exponentially to find peace again. They seem okay, but deep down I worry about the effects of their life from my staying in it for so long, and I want to be able to help them appropriately. Anyway, I would just love to hear what you and Leanne have to say about this topic and how, as a mom, I can make sure I'm helping them out the right way. Okay, so again, similar to the first question, right, that at the end at the end of the day, they're adults. The best thing you can do is make sure they're in therapy, help them to be in therapy. You know, look, I think that as parent, I think parents should always pay for their children's therapy. I mean, for fuck's sake, (laughs) really, (laughs) because what are we talking about in therapy? Our parents. So I do. I think parents should always pay for therapy. So if you can pay for them to go to therapy, if you can afford it, then do it and make sure that they are with a therapist 
who has um, an understanding and advanced training, if at all possible, in um, healing from narcissistic abuse. Um, and if you talk to a therapist and they're like, yeah, I mean, I kind of do blah, blah, you know, like, mm -mm, no. Or if they're like, sure, you know, that was part of our, you know, initial training. No, you want advanced training. You want someone who's like, yes, yes, this, I know exactly what this is and this is what I do. So, um, so make sure that they have a really good therapist. And it sounds like, you know, you, you moved 3,200 miles away. You are no contact. It sounds to me like there's no pussyfooting around what happened. My, my assumption is, I don't know if your kids moved with you or if they are still in contact with, um, their par other parent. But, um, I think that, you know, if they, if they are like, if they're also no contact and all of that, like this can be a really frank conversation. And I think you can say to them, listen, your whole life was steeped in this. I was steeped in it for 28 years and I have a lot of years, you know, on before and after, but this was the air you breathed for, you know, 16 and 18 years of your lives. And as an adult, as your mom, I want you to know that I feel <clears throat> very strongly that, that there's a lot of damage that is probably done by this. And I know you say you're okay, but I do worry about the effects of me having stayed in this relationship for so long. So I want you to know um, that I am here to help you to talk about it. And I also very much think that being in therapy would be the most important thing for your healing because I don't want you to repeat these patterns. I don't want you. And then talk to them about the fact that the, you know, repeating these patterns is an unconscious thing. This is not conscious, right? We do this stuff unconsciously and that therapy can help rewire that unconscious, uh, narrative, the, you know, the, uh, the neural connections uh, that have us choose, you know, similar to our upbringing and our parents and the wounding that we experience as children. So be really honest about it. Talk to them about it. And give them Leanne's Instagram. She talks about this stuff so much. She's so brilliant about it. And she's also, I mean, she's a coach and she mostly, she works with women. She doesn't work with kids as far as I know, but she was a therapist, knows so much about this. So you could also reach out to her. I did not have time to get her on the podcast today to answer this question with you, but we will, like we said, we're going to, we will get back together to do a podcast episode on this, but I hope that I have answered um, that question uh, as best that I can on my own. Again, I think just being really open with your kids about it. Just be really open with them. I mean, they're adults. And I think as, as the way you describe it, it seems like this is not a secret, right? This is just not a secret. There you go. All right, guys. Thank you so much to those of you who submitted questions. If you want to ask a question and have me answer it on the air in a Q&A episode, like I said, I'm going to try to do these every month. You can fill out a quick Google form with your question at kateanthony.com slash questions. And I will come back next month and do another episode on it. And again, don't forget if you're in my Facebook group, mark your calendars for April 11th, 12th, and 13th for my should I stay or should I go workshop. And I love and adore you all. And I hope you have a wonderful uh, last week of March, first week of April. We're getting into spring. Lordy, lordy, this year is flying, huh? All right, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. If you like what you hear, head on over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in and leave me a review. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Divorce Survival Guide. I'll see you next time. And until then, remember, you, my love, deserve to be happy.